I've been getting a few questions asking why I use the Yamaha pad instead of its competitors. And when answering, because it has more MIDI capabilities, I received some confused looks. So here's a video explaining what makes the M12 unique as a MIDI controller and how we set it all up. As I've mentioned before, I mainly use my drum pad as a MIDI controller for Ableton. That means I don't load my sounds onto the pad, but basically remote control the sounds being launched in Ableton via MIDI nodes. So first, let's have a look on how to set up which MIDI nodes are sent out by the individual pads. But before we get started, make sure you watch my video on how to correctly connect your pad with your computer. To set our MIDI nodes, we need to go into the MIDI menu and first select the pad we want to work on. This can be done by using the arrow up and then the plus and minus buttons to select the pad or by simply hitting the pad. Once the correct pad is selected, we want to press enter and then use the right arrow to go to the node select menu. Here again, we simply use the plus and minus buttons to select the required node. One more arrow to the right and we can also select the MIDI channel for this node. Once you're done, don't forget to press store and enter to save your changes. While most pads out there allow this function, of course, they all limit us to one node per pad. Now this is where the M12 is unique and why it has become my weapon of choice. It allows me to trigger up to four different MIDI nodes by hitting just one pad. These can even be on different MIDI channels. This opens up loads of possibilities, especially if you're not just triggering sounds, but you're also controlling the arrangement, trigger lighting clips and visuals, or you do live looping. Let's have a look at how to set it up. Going back into our MIDI node select menu, we can find the layer selector in the top right corner of the screen, currently set to layer A. Using the arrow up and the plus and minus buttons, we can here flick through our four layers, A, B, C and D. Here we can select a different MIDI node and MIDI channel for each of the layers. To demonstrate this, I've set layer A to a C, layer B to an E, layer C to a G, and layer D to a B, thereby creating a C major 7 chord. As a default, all four notes trigger at the same time, but even for that we've got some options. In the MIDI 1.1 menu, one arrow left to the note selector, we can find the modes. Here we've got three options. As we've just seen, our default, stack, plays all notes at the same time. The second option is alternate, which cycles its way through the single notes of the layers. The last option is hold. In this case, the note is held till we strike the pad again to stop it. This is better demonstrated with a longer sounding instrument. There are a few more settings on the pad that can affect our MIDI notes, like gate time, velocity limits or trigger velocity. But covering them all in this video would just take too long. And to be honest, I never felt the need to adjust any of them. What I do want to mention though is that while this tutorial obviously focuses on MIDI notes, the pad can actually send out six different types of MIDI messages. These can be set in the first part of the MIDI menu and the options are MIDI notes, control change messages, program change messages, and three different types of system executive messages. Right, I hope that gave you a bit of an overview of the MIDI capability of the Yamaha DTX Mark 12 As usual, if you have any more questions, pop them in the comments below or contact me through my website. Thanks for watching.